rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for This regular meeting of the Township Council is being held in accordance with the schedule of the meetings of the Township Council established and adopted by the Township Council, which schedule designated the time and date uh, and place of this meeting. Adequate public notice of this meeting has been provided pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act. We are using electronic amplifying and recording device in order to obtain a clear and audible record, and we request all those wishing to speak be recognized and state your name and address directly to the microphone. The recording device is to be solely utilized by the Township Clerk's Office for the preparation of the minutes and shall be the official record of the Township Council meetings. Madam Clerk, may I have the roll call, please? Mr. Hutchison. Present. Mr. Schmidt. Present. Mrs. Stubbs. Present. Mrs. Winters. Here. Mr. Mignon. Here. Mrs. Trotto. Here. Mr. Mercado. Present. Mr. Wechner. Chief Earl. Here. Mr. Parliament. Here. Mr. Cantwell. Here. Mr. Cardis. Here. We'll now have our first public portion. Our public portion shall be for agenda items only. If you're interested in speaking about the uh, ordinance, there is a public hearing for that. Uh, so that's separate from the public portion. Anyone wishing to speak on the agenda item, please raise your hand. Seeing none, we'll close the first. Miss, there's a second hearing for the ordinance. Seeing none, we'll close the first public portion. RFQ report. Deferred compensation plan. I entertain a motion. So moved. Is there a second? Second. On the question, roll call. Mr. Hutchison? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mrs. Stubbs? Yes. Mrs. Winters? Yes. Mr. Mignon? Yes. Mrs. Trotter? Yes. Mr. Mercado? Yes. yes. Next, we have Ordinance 0-17-19. There will be a public hearing for this. It's ordinance amending Chapter 48 of the Code of the Township of Gloucester to authorize the keeping of backyard chickens. Last year, our township adopted a pilot program to allow 20 permits uh, throughout the township for residents to have backyard chickens. Uh, there's restrictions limited to six chickens per license, uh, and it talked about enclosures, the maximum permitted, uh, the permitted height of the coop, uh, and upkeep of it, in addition to having some type of education uh, in maintaining uh, the backyard chickens. I entertain a motion, oh, excuse me, go to public hearing now. Public hearing, we'll have a public hearing first. Anyone wishing to speak, please raise your hand. Yes, ma'am. Good evening, Council. My name is Charlene Orzakowski. I live at 18 Stonegate Court in Blackwood, New Jersey. Um, with regards to the proposed ordinance, I still have some uncomfortability issues with regards to your pilot program that was incepted as in May of 2016. When I asked at the last council meeting, I asked if there was a written report with regards to that study. I was informed by Mr. Mercado, who answered, said no, there was no written report, that there was some, um, uh, I guess, polling of some neighbors that gave information, and I had asked, again, if there would be any consideration to compile that report, whether it was a poll or whatever, I think that this should be reduced to writing. Is there any reason why there is not a written report? Uh, personally, uh, I don't see the need for a report. Okay, but a study is a study, a feasibility is okay. a study, and there's some conclusion that should be drawn from that report in order to substantiate for you to go forward. Thank you for explaining to me what a report study is. But I don't need I your condensation either, okay? You're, you're, you're very condescending on that remark. Okay. So no, let's start off I, on a good tone. Start I over. personally don't see the need for a study of a report. There's a pilot program. Uh, we uh, issued licenses. Uh, I believe they were under 10. Uh, seven. seven throughout the township. Uh, we had workshop meetings that were held. This was held over a three-month period. We had individuals uh, that spoke in front of council. It was publicized in front of, uh, to the general public. It was in the media. Uh, no, I personally don't see a need to have a study. So I guess we'll disagree on that. Okay, we have the right to 
Disagree. Yes. I think if I could just uh, comment on that. Uh, when we, and I think we commented on this last yes. meeting that you were here. There was there were several months that uh, uh, went by that council reviewed information that was compiled. Excuse me, I can't hear you saying. There were several there were several uh, ordinances reviewed from surrounding towns and also out of state. Uh, there was a lot of reports that were given in the council. And I really don't think the intent of the pilot program was to conduct a further study. I think the intent of the pilot program, the council can correct me if I'm wrong when they instructed me to draft it, uh, was just to, to allow it for a temporary period to see how it works, to see if there were complaints coming in, uh, to see if there were zoning issues with it or code enforcement issues uh, with those that were coming in for licenses. And I don't believe there were many licenses that were requested uh, and ran through the pilot okay. program as far as my office is concerned without receiving any issues or reports uh, from code enforcement or the uh, uh, clerk's office. So I don't really think it was for council to be out there doing a study. At least that's not what was in my mind. It was just put the ordinance out there and let's see how it functions within the town. Okay, then can I ask then how did it function within the town? Were there seven applicants or were anybody else, any neighbors? Were there any, was there any input? Uh, the, the clerk, from what I understand, there was one call in, uh, but I don't think there were any complaints that I'm aware of. No, no, no complaints no. came in during I'm not the asking round. about just complaints. I mean, I'm, uh, like I said in the very, very beginning of last council meeting, I'm not opposed to the ordinance of anybody having chickens. What I am opposed to is some of the factors that I think that council has not really taken into consideration. And one of the things that I want to ask council is, why isn't this a zoning issue? Why is it a council issue? I don't understand that question. Why is this well, not a zoning issue? Why is it a council issue? <coughs> it's an ordinance. It's a regulatory ordinance. Okay. So it makes it permitted how it's drafted on, on the limited nature and the criteria that's set forth and limited the number of licenses. Okay. Um, <clears throat> do you know what type of breeds of chickens are allowed? No, I'm not aware of what type of breeds of chicken are allowed. Okay, so if I'm an applicant and I ask, are there any restrictions, then you couldn't answer that question for me. I, mean, for, I don't issue the permits, uh, Madam Clerk. I mean, I'm, excuse me, I'm addressing you, you as... Miss, I'm asking a question, okay? I, you asked me a question, I'm asking the clerk a question. So I, allow me some time to respond to you. Okay. Please, thank you. Are there any restrictions uh, about the breeds of chicken? When they come in, they'll say, I don't want a chicken permit. No, not, not really. Mr. Carl, Mayor, we don't have any restrictions There's listed. No restrictions. I don't believe there was anything that I reviewed or council reviewed during the, st the study period before the trial ordinance was established that set forth a different breed of chicken. Okay, so then an applicant can possibly get their chickens through a mail order house. Right? There's nothing restricting that. Nothing in the ordinance that restricts where, where the chickens come from. I think you should look into that, Council, because it could be a problem if you don't know where your chickens are coming from and what breeds of chickens are coming into the area. That's just a personal statement. Uh, at the workshop meeting that I attended and was invited to, <clears throat> I had, you had mentioned that an applicant will be required to fulfill a, um, a course, a, st a, a class. I had asked if it was a live seminar taught by some an individual or if it was a video um, course. And I was not able to get a response. Has anyone figured that one out yet? It is a uh, online course. An online course. There are some classes that you can take <coughs> in person um, that are offered to various different organizations, but um, I believe most folks probably have done the online course. Okay, and they can provide a copy of uh, that course that they completed the course. Okay. When they're submitting their permit for the request for a permit. And do you have any idea what the course content of that outline or the outline of that course content is on that course? Uh, no, but when we were uh, researching it, Mr. Carl and Mayor was reaching out to other municipalities to see what was included in their ordinance. They had uh, indicated that this course was available, whether it was an online course or an in-person type course. So that's what we modeled our ordinance after. Does, in fact, when they apply for the um, permit, are there any, um, let's say, is there any su substantial information that's given to an applicant where there may be some um, 
there may be a potential problem or hazard if they have young young children or if the uh, uh, applicant is pregnant or if there's anyone in the household that's pregnant, are they given that information? Not from our office, Madam Clerk. No. Okay. And I guess is the applicant pay for the course? Yes. Um, just a question with regards to this pilot, or, or if it's adopted, it's no longer a pilot program. Uh, was the pilot program funded by any type of federal, state, or agricultural uh, entities? No. Okay. With regards to code enforcement, I think at the last meeting, we, uh, we were informed that there would be two code officers, and that would be coming through the police department. Is that correct? We had code enforcement officers that operate through the police department. Okay. And I think the number that was mentioned was there were only two. Chief, is it two? That's correct, except during the summer season, there may be a little bit more. And the code enforcers are responsible for enforcing the code on every ordinance, correct? Correct. Okay. Okay. Just bear with me a moment, please. I just want to check my notes. Can I put this over? Yes. Again, I'm just going to ask the council to amend a portion of our ordinance based on the content of what is included in your outline. You're stating again that the <clears throat> coops can be five feet six inches high, but you're requiring a four foot fence, and it just doesn't make sense to me if somebody <coughs> can explain to me why the four foot fence, when the structure on the coop can be five feet six, why you wouldn't change the four feet to a six foot fence? Um, the, uh, correct me, my colleagues on council, but when we, that was discussed at our council meeting, uh, I think we didn't want our uh, homeowners or those that were interested in a uh, permit to incur additional costs. Um, do you guys recall that conversation? Yeah. Uh, as long as the coop was of a certain height, uh, we were fine with keeping uh, their existing fence at the size or the height that it's at. Has, excuse me, has uh, council taken into consideration again the uh, my comments at the last council meeting with regards to a restriction on the size of the lot? No one has brought that to my attention since the last meeting. Because that has not been discussed? The person with a quarter acre can't have these chickens. I had asked that the council uh, <clears throat> amend the ordinance, the proposed ordinance, to restrict it to a half of an acre or to an acre. I don't think there's very many properties in this town. Excuse me, I'm sorry. I don't think there's very many properties in this town that would meet that qualification. No, there are. Not very many. There are. More than you think. I live Not where I live. No, I, I live, there's about 45 homes in, the, in my neighborhood. None of them. I think when we were going through the initial uh, work on the ordinance for the pilot or trial ordinance, uh, we talked about that, and that's why the provision was put in there that the uh, chicken coop and closed run shall be set back at least 20 feet from, any, from, from the habitable portion of any neighboring residential dwelling, <coughs> and in addition, shall be set back no less than five feet from the property line. So okay, so then an example would be if my neighbor's property line is here. And if my property line, I'm sorry, their back of their house is here. And if I have, an, I'm the neighbor, and if I have an extension, if I have a 16 by 16 addition, the measurement starts from where my property ends, correct? Well, it's, 20, it it's, it's five feet from the setback line, but it has to be 20 feet from the habitable portion of any neighboring residential dwelling. So the measurement would take apart from my furthest extension. It's from the habit. Right, from correct. the house. So my 16, 16 extension, it would be 20 feet from there. Right. Okay, just wanted to be clear of that. Um, let's see, it's just a one more. I pay taxes to talk. <clears throat> 
Are there, uh, with regards to, I know there was a, a discussion at the last meeting with regards to the eggs. Somebody wanted to, uh, and I would know that in your proposed ordinance there is no selling of, there's a pro, prohib, <coughs> you're prohibiting the selling of eggs. Um, again, from a health reason, I've done some issues and I'm not going to re reiterate what my concerns were at the first council meeting with health issues. I think you all know that I've surfaced them already. <clears throat> but my concern is if they don't sell them, is there anything that's stopping them from giving them to other people? And the reason I'm saying that is because no one can identify whether how a sick chicken looks or ha if a chicken is really sick. And the infection goes from the chicken to the egg to the, cons to the neighbor, the consumer, however you want to take, uh, uh, phrase that. There's nothing in the words that prohibits that. It's just the selling of the eggs. Okay, just the selling of the eggs. Um, is, the elf, is the health department involved in any way, shape, or form in regards to this program moving forward? Uh, not necessarily the program, but they're always can participate in anything that someone says is a health issue. But this was also part of a program through sustainability program through Camden County and also the state of New Jersey. This is part of a sustainability program right. that has been uh, mirrored off of other municipalities. Okay, now, am I the only person that is asking for a change in the ordinance? Am I the only person in Gloucester Township that's concerned about this matter? I don't know, Ms. Orsakowski. I don't know if there's anyone else speaking against this ordinance. Okay. Do you have any other questions? I know there's some folks that had some hands raised uh, regarding this ordinance. Uh, so you're dismissing me? No, I'm not dismissing you, Ms. Orsakowski. Okay. I'll limit it to one more question, I believe I have. Will there be an inspection at all of the structure of the coops? There is, let's see, if there is a violation, there is a code enforcement violation. If there's a violation of the ordinance, yes, they would go out and take a look at the property. Okay, now what time, at what portion would that be done? Before the chickens come? So in other words, the coop is going to be there. If you have to have the coop before you have the chickens. Okay. So is the coop going to be inspected before the chickens come to make sure that it's in compliance? No, if there was a complaint uh, that was filed with uh, the municipality, they would go out and take a look at the coop. Uh, but I, no, code enforcement will not go out and take a look at the coop before, um, you know, if, if you receive chickens. Now it seems like you're firefighting instead of fire preventing. I don't have a comment. Okay, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I don't have chickens. Sir, can I have your name and your address, please? Mike DeVito, 123 Trinity Avenue, Blackwood. Okay. I don't have chickens, but in reading the proposals, um, I would ask council, motion council, to remove the restriction of six chickens because I don't believe that anybody that has chickens has that small amount. Also, the same amount of preparation to be up to code with the coops and the license is practically the same. That's it. Thank you, Mr. DeVito. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Evening, Council. Mike Atanasio, 5 Cedar Creek Drive in Glen Oaks. So I'm one of the permit holders for the pilot program for the chickens. I just wanted to thank the Council for starting this pilot program up. It's been nothing but a glowing success in my little neighborhood. I have the neighbor's children coming over, bringing their friends from school all the time to learn about the chickens, to see them, to experience farming on a small little quarter acre plot. My nephew came over, pulled a carrot out of my garden, looked at it, it was dirty, and he threw it on the ground and said, I want a clean one. That's kids these days. They don't know where their food comes from. They don't understand where gardening and, ag and animals and what they do for us and where our food comes from. And this is en enabling us on a small scale to teach children to respect where the food comes from, not to throw food away just because they're not hungry or want some snack instead of something healthy and to appreciate animals for what they are. 
that they provide for us, not only comfort and entertainment, but can be a food source as well. The ordinance is six chickens. We have to go through some pretty substantial hoops at this uh, pilot program and to be approved for a permit, so we take good care of our chickens on a very small scale. They're pets more so than they are just livestock. So that takes a lot of the concerns away from having chickens running rampant through the neighborhood. And we do respect and love these animals, and it's been, as I said, nothing but a success. So I just wanted to thank the council. I appreciate that. Right. Uh, thanks for your comments. Can you take me through the process of how you went about this and the program, that, whether online or a live class? Sure, in, in terms of the education to get approval for the permit? So when you first found out about the chicken pilot program, right. uh, I guess you contacted the clerk's office. Absolutely. Well, I was here for that the initial process, and it's something that I had been researching on my own just as part of that back-to-nature mindset that I have. So before even coming to apply for the permit, I was knowledgeable. And knowing some of the other permit holders, I know we're all of the same mindset, that we didn't just jump into this and say, hey, we can have chickens, let's go spend a couple hundred dollars to build a coop and see what happens. There was a lot of research to make sure this was something that was sustainable, maintainable, and that wouldn't upset our neighbors, because we have to live here too. Uh, in terms of the online course that I found, uh, I did a little research in terms of going to an in-person one or online, and from the outlines of the courses that I found, there was a negligible difference. So it was a convenience factor to do the online course, which I did find very educational and taught me things that I hadn't learned yet in my own research. And the online course was there a topic that addressed maintaining the coop? Absolutely. It's one of the most important aspects to having the eggs, which is the big draw of having backyard chickens. Sick chickens don't lay eggs. So you really do need to maintain that coop to be clean and healthy, not only for human standards, but for the animals as well, who are even more susceptible to things like smells and odors and dust and pollutants. If they have those, they're not going to lay, they're going to be sick, and no one benefits from that. Thank you very much. Any I'm other questions? Um, did the, was there any discussion of health concerns or if, if a coop is not maintained? possible health concerns that could lean towards or lends itself to chickens becoming sick. Is there any type of discussion like that? In terms of the, the educational content of the course? Yes. Absolutely. Yes, they did discuss that. It's stressed number one, number two, and number ten on the list is keep your chickens clean and healthy. Anything, anything else questions? I can help out with? I'd love to talk about that. No. Any more questions for us? I know. Just wanted thank to thank you. you again. Appreciate it. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, sir. section. Thanks, Council, for, oh, first of all, I am the pioneer of the backyard chickens. I am the person that came here in February and asked you guys, can I have chickens? And you all looked at me. And we went through six months. I came to every single meeting. I explained to everything. If she wants to know any, if she has any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. I'd like to real, really what Mike just said. We spent a lot of money on these coops. I have $1,000 wrapped up in one coop. I have six chickens. I get on an average of three eggs a day. They will not lay eggs when they're sick. Um, my wife, as you know, when I first came, she has dementia. It helped her great. She goes out three or four times a day. She takes care of these chickens. When my grandkids come down, they look for the eggs. They love it. It's very educational. As far as ordering chickens online, you're only going to order hens. You're not going to order anything farm. Chickens do not give human people sickness. My wife has asthma. Chickens suffer with asthma. They live five to six years. I'd just like to thank you again. I appreciate what you did for me and my family. Bob, uh, may I ask you a question? Excuse my naiveness. How do you know a chicken's sick? It's very difficult. You look in their eyes, and they get cloudy. When a chicken gets sick, it's almost too late. They can't tell you. 
and they will not lay eggs. You, you got to keep an eye on your chickens, which one's going to lay the egg that day. We have six chickens, six different color eggs. We have an Americano that lays a blue egg. We have a Will Summer that lays a dark brown egg. We have pink eggs. They're all pedigree chickens. These are not three or four dollar chickens. These chickens cost twenty dollars a piece. They all had their shots. It's the same as if you got a cat or a dog. As far as the four foot fence, we talked about this at one of the meetings. They're in a coop. The fence has nothing to do with the coop. They're locked in a coop. They don't come out. I'll answer any questions you have. Any other questions, Mr. Bob? Bob, do you have any other questions for us? I have a question. Uh, oh, Frank? Um, would you happen to know, with the area of ground that the ordinance gives reference to, what would be the number of airborne fecal coliforms produced by six chickens? He's that's, a scientist. That's, He's over here. that's the, the deal with me. I think the program's great for the reasons that you're saying, but we have some citizens that have compromised immune systems that, due to cancer. We have the elderly, and we also have the children. And until I get that number, which is a scientific number, um, I know which way I'm going to go. I think what it does for you, it's good. But there are others, we're here for all the citizens. And there, even if there's a small amount of citizens that could be compromised by this, it could be a health concern, which is... What I do know, I don't think it can be any worse than a dog. I pick, you know, I, my backyard backs up to Somerdale, Terrace Avenue. People walk by and I pick it up all the time because they think they're outside and nobody sees them, but I'm picking them up. Chicken manure is very good for your gardens. Correct. That's what I do know. I've never heard, and I'm not, trying, I'm not trying to be funny, I've never heard of anybody dying from a sick chicken, a person. I've never heard of a person getting sick from a chicken. I'm not trying to be funny either, but as a small child, my father put chicken manure in our front yard for fertilizer. My basketball went into it, and I broke out hives. So I'm not trying to be funny either. Is it when he fed the chicken? I mean, he purchased the chicken manure from a vendor, so we don't know what it was right. fed. But that's why I have some concerns. Yeah. Also. My chickens are, and and us guys that have our backyard chickens are organic chickens. We don't feed them anything. <laughs> They're just strictly organic. Anything that you don't want to eat, you don't feed your chickens. <coughs> They're like birds, outside birds. You know, you can get something from a hawk that goes out in the yard. <coughs> okay. But I'm not okay in the hawks. Somebody of a far greater right. being okay the hawks for me. I am going to be okay in the chickens. And that's my concern also. Right. Well, I, I was just mention another big bird that go to the bathroom in the air and it's in your yard. I understand. Thank you. These, questions? these chickens are cooped up. They're not out in the yard. They're not free range. I do have one question. When a chicken expires, do you take it to the vet? Yes, just like you would your dead cat or your dead dog. Yes. I haven't made it there yet, but hope they don't. My chickens are a year old. I got them last year when we got approved. Well, thank you very much, Bob. I appreciate it. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Sherry Heim. I'm, I also live in Timber Birch. Um, it's actually my father. So, <laughs> and we got chickens because my kids, we live two houses from my dad. I have five kids. They, their ages are 19 to 8. They spent all day in his chicken coop. They weren't out on the streets. My 19-year-old brings his friends over to come play with chickens. My 8-year-old brings her friends over to play with chickens. They help clean the coop. They, they, just, they do everything. 
it's been nothing but the best learning experience for them. They eat healthy eggs. My husband had high cholesterol. He doesn't anymore. They're organic eggs. They're almost cholesterol free. Like there's just been nothing at all bad about any of this. My kids love it. Our neighbors love it. Our neighbors have brought their kids over to see our chickens, play with them. Our house backs up to somebody else, same as my dad's. People walk by our house all day long and all they do is say how neat these chickens are. They can't believe there's no smell. They can't believe there's no mess. It's just been, it's been great. There hasn't been anything negative for us about it. So I know you have concerns about kids. That's why I just want to let you know. Our kids, my, my daughter literally rolls around in the coop. So <laughs> she's, how old no, is she's, she's how eight. Old? She's eight. She's eight. The study I read was the, kid, the children were five. Well, and my, uh, my nine-year-old has a heart condition. And he also is in there with the chickens, and we've had no bad effects on him as well. So, that's it. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Uh, I think you ought to pass this ordinance. Sir, can I have your name, please? My name is Jay Michaels. I live in Ariel. I think you should pass this ordinance because there's nothing negative about a chicken. People have dogs. They crap all over the street. They don't pick it up. The chicken stays in the yard. He don't go any place. The chicken can't make a mess. They don't know how to make a mess. There, there's nothing negative about a chicken. They eat all the garbage. They, they, just like the guy said, you, there's no waste. Pass it, and, and you're a little remiss in your building. Your building, your 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 ordinance. Should, the building should be a little bit bigger because people are going to have to get in the building to clean it out. And if it's a small building, they can't get in it to clean it out. Your building has to be at least five foot. You got a little tiny lady, she can't get into it. The building's got to be bigger. And a four foot fence is good. So, uh, the coops are five feet, sir. Pardon? The coops are five feet. Okay, it's got to be at least five feet high, at least. And four to five foot fence would be good. Because they don't need a whole lot of room, but they gotta, they gotta, you gotta let them get outside. You can't keep them just in a coop. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. My name is George Clark. I live at 1750 Hybrid Place, which is in the Cherrywood townhouses. Mm -hmm. uh, I applaud the eloquent speakers that we've had that are in favor of this ordinance. They're very, they seem to be very responsible owners. They seem to be very responsible people. What I have an objection to and a problem with is how many chicken ordinances are you going to have? If my neighbor has a chicken coop, what's to stop me from getting one? The person down the street from me. How many chicken coops will be allowed on the street? I can remember, and I've lived here long enough to know when this was a rural community. In fact, where we're standing right now used to be a cornfield. And all up and down Gladco, Kempton Road, that's all you had were farms, cornfields and forests. We don't live like that now. We live in crowded suburban housing developments. And just because someone could meet the codes with a small lot, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a good thing to have a chicken coop with six chickens in it and then have their neighbor say, gee, they got away with it, why can't I? This way I don't have to pay for eggs anymore and it would be nice and healthy, it would be this, that, and the other thing. You have to consider your neighbors. Chickens are noisy. Yes, they can be. And there's nothing in there that says that you're limiting that, that you can only have hens as pets. What if you're going to get a rooster crowing in the middle in the morning? Disturbing your neighborhood and disturbing your neighbors. Chickens greet the sunrise too, even the females. I don't understand how this can be good for a suburban community with houses living and people living cheek by jowl as it is and saying, well, yeah, it's okay. Some people that had a quarter acre of ground or, or an acre of ground, they were allowed to have chickens. I have a fairly big yard. I can put a chicken coop in my yard. My neighbors don't have a very big yard, but they could still qualify. And their neighbors down the street and their neighbors down the street. How many are you going to have? Are you going to limit the number of licenses in the town? To how many? Uh, okay. Are, are, are you 
be done with your comments. Yes, I, I, I want to answer your questions. Okay. Uh, there are 20 uh, permits maximum for this okay. ordinance. Uh, it is for single family homes. Okay. Uh, when you Which, talked about, uh, there's nothing in the ordinance that indicates that they have to be hen. No roosters are permitted. It's clearly stated in the ordinance. Uh, so I think that addressed some of the questions that you had. Okay. Comments about us being the community that we are in a rural community. This is a sustainability project. Uh, and it's an opportunity, um, as the gentleman indicated before, and, and um, the lady uh, that came after him, um, regarding what it's done with their family, they're learning them agriculture. Those are things. It's a sustainability program, sir. So live in a pro live in a farm. If you if you want to raise animals, chickens are barnyard animals. They're not pets. They're food animals. What's next? Now somebody wants to have a llama, so we'll have a, an or ordinance to allow a pre project for, for llamas now, or for burros, or for anything else. If you want to raise animals that are not pet animals, making a law declaring them pets does not make them any better citizens in the animal community, or in the animal kingdom. They are food animals. They're not pets. And there should be a difference about where people live who want to raise food animals. And it's not where somebody's backyard backs up to somebody else's backyard. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else? We'll close the hearing. I entertain a motion. I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Second. On the question. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Mr. Hutchison. First of all, I'd like to say that I, I appreciate the differences of opinion up here. Uh, oftentimes, uh, when we meet at the workshops, we discuss things at the workshop. Uh, if there's disagreement, uh, a lot of times it won't come up here. Um, but some things are very important, um, and the vote has come up here. So again, I respect any, anybody who disagrees uh, with my vote here. But I think this has been a resounding success um, in this township. I'm proud to say that we passed the chicken ordinance. I do respect, Mr. Clark, uh, you ma'am, I, I do respect your opinions, but I'm going to vote yes on this. Mr. Schmidt? Until I get my parts per million question answered, I have to vote no. Mrs. Stubbs? I will vote yes. Um, and again, my reason being, I look at someone having three or four dogs that live in next door to you, and your neighbor giving me a dog, and your neighbor giving a dog, and the parts per million of the people matter of the dog, and dogs are, if we, as we know, people do not look up after their dogs. We have people who have dogs in their yards who don't keep them as clean as we would like, like them to. Um, and I'm, I'm trying to, to look at it, I put myself in that position. As long as I think we are all in our, our we have some people who have concerns, I'm sure we'll be very knowledgeable of that code. And if that code is not where it should be, you know that you have a remedy through code enforcement to make sure that everything is proper and is uh, handled properly within those yards. And I think that's what we're going to rely on, would be that handling of code. So I agree with this. Mrs. Yes. Mrs. Trotto? Yes. Mr. Mercado? Yes. Next, we have our resolutions consent agenda. If any council member would like to remove any of the items from the consent agenda, please speak up. Hearing none, I entertain a motion to accept the consent agenda as presented. I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. On the question, Madam Clerk? Mr. Hutchison? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mrs. Stubbs? Yes. Mrs. Winters? Yes. Mr. Mignon? Yes. Mrs. Trotto? Yes. Yes. Next, we have a GTE Gov access email. This email was sent in uh, from Mr. Dave Johnson from 408 Apple Avenue, Blenheim, New Jersey. Uh, he, a question. He has three questions for council. I had asked about the cost of Heritage Park on Somerdale Road on April 11th and was given a response that the cost of the project won't be known until it's done. What was the projected or estimated cost of the project before it was started? Uh, this is Heritage Park, which is located on Somerdale Road. Uh, the estimated cost is uh, approximately thirty thousand dollars. The funds that uh, are uh, the funds for the project derived from the 
redevelopment or developer's open space account. When a developer comes into our township, uh, there's two accounts uh, that they would provide money towards. If they're not putting in sidewalks, they put money into a sidewalk fund. If they're not putting recreation in their particular neighborhood for a development project, they put money into a rede uh, redeveloper's uh, recreational open space account. That's where the funding for a Heritage Park is coming from. Second question, what is the projected cost of the new bike share kiosk that's being built by the caboose on West Church Street and Railroad Avenue? Uh, the bike share kiosk, uh, the approximate cost is roughly $25,000, um, where you have the kiosk is about $13,250, and then uh, the roofing of it, the shelter of it, uh, Mr. Carr's, that's approximately $11,990. Uh, that came from a grant from Camden County, a $25,000 grant. And last question. A uh, question about the new prefab bathrooms that are being voted on tonight to be located at Veterans Park. Roughly, where in the park will these bathrooms be located? Will the bathrooms be like bathrooms by Timber Creek Park? Will they have separate men and women's rooms, or will they be gender-neutral bathrooms? Will these bathrooms have a family-style bathroom that will be equipped with a changing station for parents with infants? The prefab bathroom to be located, uh, if you're going out to the park on the left hand side where the porter pots are located, uh, the bathrooms will be a little bit smaller than the bathrooms that are located at Timber Creek Park on Choose Landing Road here. There will be a separate men and women's bathroom, handicap accessible, so four different stalls, two and two. Uh, the bathrooms, no, they will not be family style, uh, but we do have the option later on, Mr. Carter, is that correct, if we needed to add a changing station for parents with infants. And we can also add heating and air conditioning. Heating and air conditioning, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so thank you Mr. Johnson for your question. Now we'll open up the second public portion. This is open to any agenda item only. Uh, anyone wishing to speak, please raise your hand. Miss Grace, how are you? Yeah. Uh, you thought we disappeared, didn't you? No, no. Ah. No, we didn't disappear, thank you. <clears throat> Carolyn Grace, um, Hampshire Road in Brittany Woods. I have um, just, uh, I want to give you guys this because we're having another walk, sip, and talk. Okay. okay. Um, on the 17th. So please join us. <coughs> just to update you, and then I brought Ms. Shirley and Ms. Um, Don Ellison, who's also been working with us in the community, Mayor, and um, Jim McLaughlin came out on the 29th and we did our cleanup. Make no mistake, it is a lot of work. And we do get a little bit tired, but we just kind of wanted to update you on what we've been doing and know that on Hampshire alone, uh, there was 17 abandoned houses. Now there's about seven. Um, so they're buying homes. It's cleaner. Public Works have been diligent with a lot of things that they've been doing, but we still need help. Um, we're worried. We're not worried about it. And I'm going to have Ms. Shirley come up and speak about the playground that's coming up. But we had thought about some concerns because we do have a lot of traffic with teenage boys on our streets just hanging out. So we're worried about our park and we really want to know when the ordinance, what the ordinance are for parks. Do they, do they close? Whether our park is going to have a gate? Um, we're not sure if we need to be talking to recreation or the mayor. Um, we just haven't had any information since the park um, has been approved. So we have that concern. Um, as far as um, our cleanup is going, it's going well. We're, we have another one scheduled. Um, we still have to meet with the mayor, but we also have a national night out that we're going to work with Jen with and work on that. We have an upcoming project called um, Adopt a Mailbox, and we're hoping to get you guys involved because Brittany Wood is a curbside appeal thing that we want to do. And it's horrendous for horrible mailboxes so we're hoping that maybe council can come up and help us with some ideas on how we can raise money <coughs> to help get um, mailboxes replaced in Brittany Woods. Those who can pay will pay. Those who can't we're hoping to have brand new um, um, Rubbermaid mailboxes put in this neighborhood to make it look better. A lot of neighbors are trying. A lot of neighbors, we, we start to hear a lot of lawnmowers going in the morning. We're starting to hear, uh, see people responding to our flyers that we put in the mailbox. But again, it's, it's, it's trying because we still have neighbors who are renters. I, I've noticed on my blog just the renters who just don't care. 
So we, we also have concerns about um, our trash cans. I, I don't know if it's a flaw design or whatever. I know back in, um, and uh, when I first purchased my home 30 years ago, we used to put our trash cans in the back and kind of pull them through the house but uh, cans are dirty, so I guess people don't want to do that anymore. So these cans are outside. So we're getting to a point where we're worried about um, ordinance and, and codes and what can we say to our neighbors to get them to, to take pride in their neighborhood. You know, we're at the point where we have provide as much support as we can. Um, now it's about letting them know that fines could come, you know, code enforcement can come through, and how much can we, as, as a small little organization, what can we say to our neighbors to get them to understand that um, we want a better neighborhood. We don't want um, a neighborhood, when we come home, we want it quiet, we want, we want it to be safe, and we want it to feel good. We want to be able to bring people to our neighborhoods and, and not see piles of trash on the side of your house. So that's some of my concerns. I don't know if you want to answer some of those before um, um, Shirley comes up. You had a lot of statements, Ms. Kirk. I know. Okay. Statements and concerns. Well, I want to applaud you for taking back your neighborhood. And I think that you um, uh, and Ms. Shirley um, and uh, Ms. Donna. Donna, okay, have, have been an inspiration to your neighbors. Um, I know individuals that, that, Thank you. that live there. And have commented, uh, I, I'll be frank with you, at my friend who does it, they go, some ladies were around my house <laughs> and talking about community and the way that you advocated for recreation in your community. Thank you. Because you are taxpayers as well. And I think the, uh, with the adopt the mailbox, now my question on the mailbox, have in the past, have they been vandalized? Is, or, or just people just... I think they're just old. They're and, just old. And, the, and the reason why it came up is because when we started putting these flyers on the side of the mailboxes on the little latch, there's like short mailboxes, there's mailboxes that are leaning, there's mailboxes that are on the ground. And, and, and I don't know why it's like that, but no one seems to have, you know, it's, it's few that have actually replaced their mailboxes. So it seems to be a project we decided to take on. We're hoping to get business owners involved, we're hoping to get Lowe's involved, which they have helped us already with rakes and bags and things. We're hoping to talk to the post office as well to see if they can adopt the first 10 each. So we wanted to get started with 20 mailboxes. So, and uh, we're, we've gotten the, the uh, what do you call it, the, uh, um, I forget what you call it, I don't know what this is called. It's basically the instructions for the size of the mailbox, the size, and I got that from the postmaster. So I know the height the mailbox is supposed to be and all of the um, dimensions of the mailboxes, but we want them to um, start it off, kick it off, and then we were hoping to get the businesses in the neighborhood and uh, Gloucester Township to, you know, maybe do, do, you know, adopt a mailbox. We have 368 homes in that neighborhood. So it, it, it's, it's our curbside appeal project. We also met another lady who lives in a neighborhood, her name's Nora. She um, understands grants for, she said there's an enrichment project for a tree, but that's down the, the road. But all we're trying to do is make our neighborhood more beautiful and increase the value of the property because we lost a lot of property value. It's coming along, but it's not where, you know, it, it's exhausting. We we just lost a member, you know, because she had to go back to school, but um, we, we gained another one. Uh, Miss Linda is going to join us. So we're working hard, but we're really, I'm concerned today about um, what can we say at this point. Our flyers have just been supportive, we'll help, we'll do what we can. But at some point, it comes to neighbors who are just not budging and they're not really doing the, 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 the simple things. So what can we say to those neighbors as far as fines and ordinance and whose job is that? Should we just you know, call code enforcement? Or can we still say certain things in our flyers um, to our neighbors about keeping your property clean? I think starting off uh, with a flyer uh, and, and communicating with them the expectations that 
uh, the organization has for your community as neighbors. Uh, and if that doesn't work, anyone is free to contact code enforcement uh, regarding matters in, in your neighborhood. Uh, I want to address the question you had about the park, uh, about the uh, playground equipment. With any of our parks, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Chief Earl, it is a um, dawn to dusk. Uh, so when, when the sun's down, that park is supposedly closed. Uh, but Tom, are you aware if there's any, is there going to be fencing around well, this particular I did want to structure interject. Right. I, I heard there was a question about where we were putting the park. At first, but we all we worked that out. I did call a recreation and I called, I think, the mayor's office because when we were talking, that I don't know if you know that little, the, the townhomes that are beige colored, um, I called the property manager because I wanted to partner with them about putting cameras on there buildings, but the lady had mentioned that's not their land, that's not township's land, that's our land. So yeah, it was a question, but we worked it out and found out that yes, it is the, the pro township's so property. So it's going to go back to the location where the original one was? In that cul-de-sac, yes. Okay. Um, and as far as fencing, we certainly can look at fencing. No, it's yeah. not part of the bid specs now, I would do it as a Is that something that your group will be interested in? Yeah, we're, I, I was talking to Shirley coming here, and, I, and you know, I'm I like to start with the small things, and that to me is something that we're concerned about because we don't want teenagers hanging out there. We want it for the kids, and we want them to know, you know, and, and we, I think Nora lives on that street, and there's another lady that lives on that street. They said they would lock it up, you know, you know the gates were and everything. Were able to look at the equipment? Did Mr. Fagan show you? We didn't get a chance to look at the equipment, okay. no. Stop by and she'll show you. Okay. At the recreation center, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, he has died. So we would like Jen to, and this might, um, uh, Mr. Earl, uh, the uh, signs that says uh, neighborhood crime watch or something um, that indicates there's some kind of surveillance I think would be good deterrent to be put over there. I don't know about the lighting, as I really haven't looked, but um, just some little things that I think that'll keep um, the wrong kids away um, and make sure it's for the kids because it's a really great um, opportunity to have something for the kids to do in the neighborhood, it really is. So Shirley, I don't know if you want to. Thank you, but that's, that's all that I have. Okay. Um, Thanks, so please, and, and, uh, feel free to join us. We're just going to walk on the 17th and see the progress that's been made. So if you want to join us, come by 1230 to 130. Thank you very much. Very well. Ms. Shirley, how are you? Hi, hi everybody. How are you doing? Um, my question is, um, okay, of course I'm from Brittany Woods, is um, when are you going to break ground for the playground? Mr. Carter. Because um, I, I have like 27, we have like 27 children that help us with our cleanup. Sure. Okay, and um, those kids are asking questions now because I told them we we're going to get a park. Where is our park? Okay, so hopefully we're going to come to some, let us know when can we see some like groundbreaking or ribbon cutting or something. Uh, Carol just covered some of my questions as far as security is concerned. And um, I too have been in Brittany Woods for 37 years, okay, and it's called the ABC Park, and it's at Yorkshire and Edenshire Road, okay, and on Yorkshire, as soon as you turn into it, it has now become a cluster of teenagers, and to me, teenagers 18 to 23, and I don't like the element, and I came up here back in November or December and asked for a park. And I don't want the township to put aside all this money to give us a park and then have to close it because of the element that I see. I'm very nosy. I do my neighborhood. I ride around. I take names. I talk to people, you know, and I notice a lot of things, okay? And one of the things that I'm noticing, there's too much negative traffic near that park, okay? Because we did our cleanup. That was one of my streets to clean up. And beer bottles liquor bottles, a couple other little things, you know, we had the plastic gloves and everything, but I'm standing there with one of the kids and saying, I don't think this is a good idea to have to park here because if this is what's going to be happening on this side of the street and the park's right across the street, that's not good for my kids. So, Chief, 
um, more signs, you know. Hopefully, when the park is built, there'll be, you can put it all on one pole, you know, what ordinance, what violations if you're caught, you know, and I told the kids and I told the teenagers and the young people, I will be retiring, so you will see me a lot. And I do, and Jennifer knows, I take down names, license plate numbers, I take pictures of cars, I will be sending them everything. Because we didn't come this far for these kids or for our neighborhood. I mean, you should really come out and see it. It's a big difference. Um, to have a park built with taxpayers' money, wherever it may be, to have it closed because of what happened to the other five parks we had. Okay? So, um, as far as being gated, you know, security, because I asked the mayor, 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 about like security, and Jen, she was there too at our meeting, and he said, yeah, that's kind of expensive. You know, for surveillance, cameras, you know, even this one, this one, you know, just so that these kids will have a place to play, you know, without having to deal with these other people that will probably be taking over the park from them, because the element is developing. I'm just letting you know, Chief, it's developing and I don't like it. Okay, so if you get a list of license plate numbers and pictures of cards, it comes from me. And these are the people that I don't want in my neighborhood. I don't like what they're doing. Okay? So, thank you very much for the park. Thank you for your time. Good luck with the chicken. Ms. Shirley, before you leave, <laughs> thank you for your comments. But I also want to thank you. I didn't have an opportunity to thank you for being a team leader for Martin Luther King Day. I sent her a last minute email and she came up and was a team leader for that day, so thank you. I appreciate it. Yes, and my daughter said, yo mom, let's do McDonald's next year, so you got another volunteer. Okay. All right. Um, folks, folks, we need to raise hands before we, we get a we um, approach. Okay. All right, Ms. Donna, yes, and then Mr. Sanagla right after you. Okay. Yes. Hi. Council, um, my name is Donna Ellison. I too live in Brittany Woods and I am a part of the Brittany Woods Community Action Group. Um, I have spoken to Officer McLaughlin and also to Mayor Mayer about the easements behind our homes that are so overgrown with trash and just weeds and things and you can't even access the backs of the homes there because of that. There was a time when the township did use that um, for the fire department and when they abandoned it, they did not notify the homeowners that they could take their property back. So it has not been tended to in years since then. Of course, they say, I think it's about 15 feet of it belongs to the homeowners, but then there's a large portion that still exists there that belongs to the township, and the township does not send anyone out there to take care of it. So my question is, what can the township do for us to get that area under control so that the homeowners can take it back and be responsible for it? Um, there was a time Joe Hogay, who used to be on code enforcement, came, used to come back there with me and he would um, ticket it, some, well I'm not going to say ticket right away, but he would put them on notice that they had to take care of the area. And they did, but nothing's been done since Joe's been gone. And I've been in this in that development a long time. Ms. So, right. Ms. Dodd, correct me if I'm wrong. So there are some homeowners and slash renters that are unaware that behind that that easement section, 15 feet of that is theirs. So there are no. Because um, I live amongst people that have still they're still homeowners. There's a lot of homeowners still within the area, but they didn't know that they could take their land back. Okay. They weren't notified. So uh, we have a communication issue there that perhaps we can work with your group in notifying them, but also Mr. Carl Mayor and Mr. Cardis. I want I want to make sure that that beyond that 15 feet setback is our property, the township's property, and Mr. Cardis, if it is, if that's something that Public Works can go out and assess and possibly remedy, based, yeah, uh, based on what Mr. Carl Mayor, our right. solicitor, yeah. comes back. With. I mean, I get people from Spring Valley, they try to dump back there, but I'm always on my bullhorn. If you throw one more thing back there. You have a bullhorn, Mr. Donna? Oh, I'm uh, sleeping uh, softly okay. right there. And I tell them, if you throw one more thing back there, I'm calling the police, you know what I'm saying? 
because then I don't want nobody thinking that it's my trash, you know. And the poison ivy back there is so bad. I mean, you could I spray back there, but then I have the neighbors that don't spray because they don't know, you know what I'm saying? Like some of them are renters that that is their responsibility too. Um, so I, I'm really concerned about that, you know, having that accessibility. It used to be a road. They used to take trucks. It was a quarry back there or something at one time. And the trucks used to go up and down there. And then, of course, the fire, you know, had the department had access to it as well. So, Ms. Tom, let me get some answers um, through Mr. Carla Merritt and uh, Mr. Cardis, and then we'll reach out to you. I do have an email address here. Mm -hmm. um, I also have Ms. Shirley's address. If you could provide me your address and phone number for the clerk, we'll take that down as well. Okay. okay, and I have one more question about um, signage. Is there any way we can get like, a sign put up saying a clean community, uh, you know, at the corner of Jarvis and um, Wiltshire? They're throwing trash out there at the corner. And is there a way to get a can, like some cans put, you know, throughout the community that, you know, people can put trash in, especially at the bus stops where the kids are? You know, that's where we're finding a lot of it at as well there. Mr. Cardis, is that something that's talking about a bench where we have the two the trash can and the recycling can on either side? Um, one, are we able to throw in township trash cans in the neighborhood that's... Well, what about at that corner? At a corner. I think a corner. Yeah, right away. It's a corner right away. Mm -hmm. At that corner, is, is it possible to get like a trash can there or a sign that says, please do not litter, clean community? You know? I, I, we can put some signs up, and I can do a bench like we do out, out here in the park, you know, with the trash can on the other side. Can you provide the address to Ms. I Ms. Grace? Ms. Grace? Uh, we're we're tagging yeah, here? Yes, we were working on that with Jen. Well, we were planned on talking to Jen about the bus stops and maybe putting the pole up with the little trash cans that go around those poles okay. at the bus stops, because I think that's where most of the trash is coming from. Primarily, it's trash cans. It's not a matter of the bench right yeah, no, it's not trash. the benches. It's just the trash can. Yeah, I don't know what they're called, but I've seen them other places. They're like a pole, and they got a little trash can. I mean, like a little, uh, you know what I'm talking about? Yes. <laughs> so, but I thought Jen or someone would, uh, I don't know. Well, I had spoken to Jen about Public the signs. I did. Public Works Act. Who is the, uh, the, super, the guy that built Public Works? I just want to say, those guys have been wonderful. They have Thank done an excellent job. Again, for the second time, but Donna, you forgot to talk about the um, the boarded up homes. The boarded up. Miss Grace and Donna, I, your, your time's up. We have some other folks there. Can we mention one other thing? Can, what about the boarded up homes that we have? Are, are is there something to do about that? Or because we don't want boarded up homes in our. Why are they boarded up? Are well, they boarded up through uh, the mortgage company or has it been boarded up because there's been a fire or vandalism or they've been boarded up from the township who's boarded them up we, we have no idea we don't we don't have any idea why they're boarded they don't look like they've been in a fire or like a fire or anything just they're just it was maybe a bro i'm thinking broken windows this, this grace is most likely mortgage company but if you could provide us the with homes. the address miss shirley because you see everything there yes. um provide us um those addresses yes to us, and we'll take a look at it. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Snaglia. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Rich Snaglia, and I live at 22 Sumter Court. Um, back in the fall of 2015, I contacted the uh, Public Works Department to come out and take a look at the situation in front of my house where uh, whoever did the paving didn't pitch it right and it's eaten away some of the paving that was in front of the house. As a result, water lays in there. In the wintertime, it freezes. In the summertime, um, I'm concerned maybe there might even be mosquitoes just laying there. And uh, when I go out of the driveway, it scrapes the bottom of the car. Some of the paving has been eaten away. Now, that was 2015. I was told at that time that it would take about six months for them to respond to this. They thought that there were some things they could do to remediate the situation. And uh, to make a long story short, uh, up until I guess a month ago, I had not heard back at all from the uh, Public Works Department. Uh, I'm not going to mention any names. I remember the individual I spoke with. But 
So I went to the Public Works Department, I left my name, explained the situation, left my name and number. That was a month ago, haven't heard a word since. Not even the courtesy of a phone call to say, yeah, we'll be out in another year or whatever. Uh, I figured, well, okay, let me, let me go right to the mayor's office, which I did. I went to the mayor's office, did not speak to the mayor directly, but spoke to uh, his clerk or secretary, whomever it was. Once again, left my name and number. Uh, I expected at least a phone call back to find out what the problem was. I have not heard back from the mayor's office. It's been a couple weeks. Uh, the question is, who do I talk to? Where do I go next with this problem? Bridge, uh, thank you for coming here tonight. Prime me your phone number, your personal cell phone number. I'll give you my cell phone number, and I'll have someone contact. I will contact you personally. Okay. Uh, right. Lander, who do I give that to? Come up here. Okay. Joanne Pagaro and I live at 10 Sumter Court. My question is, I have a house next door to me where the grass is so high, I've been calling for someone to come out and mow this grass or do something with it. No one responds to us. No one comes out. No one looks at the, the lighting or anything that's going on in Sumter Court. Nothing at all. I literally took pictures of how high the grass is that our neighbors went out and mowed it down. Who do I contact for them to go out, or how does the family of this property, there's two, one next to Mr. Sinaglia and one next door to me, how do we get these mows, these lawns mowed, and who is responsible for them? You would, now, they're, they're still living there, the families? No. Based, no, they're abandoned. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have a cut program that goes to our public works department. You can provide us the address of those two locations, uh, and Mr. Carr will forward that to our public works department. If they are abandoned, the mortgage company, what we'll do is we'll cut the property and then lean it against the mortgage company. I think that's good through code first. Code? Okay. And so I jumped a step. Yeah, okay. and then we, once code approves it, we'll go out and cut it. But I think and, that and then, then the family will be billed, is that how it goes? The mortgage or? company. The mortgage yeah. company. Suppose there isn't a mortgage on that property. You place a lien against the property. You know, there's okay. Tax and I have one more question. How long does this all take? We're going to try to expedite this. I need the addresses. Okay. I'm can, willing you, to give can you bring up the addresses here? So okay. just tell Mr. Carson. Sure. Come on up. Council Ray Paladura, the historical village of Ariel. Last year, um, I believe you guys described uh, a tax situation as the perfect storm, unaware that the schools were raising taxes, the county was raising taxes, and you yourself had a 12% increase in the property tax. Created a perfect storm, most devastating to a lot of people in the township. I just read this afternoon that the county freeholders have approved um, a budget that looks to increase by way of taxes 
$6.6 million. Now, the township, if I'm not mistaken, is the collector of all taxes and then distribute it out to the different entities, correct? Correct. Now, with this tax, in, uh, with this tax increase due to the increase in budget, you will be notified at what time, now that they just did this Friday, at what time would you normally be notified that the county is looking for an increase in taxes from Gloucester Township's portion of that, uh, that increase in revenue that they're looking to procure by way of taxes? Can you ask when does the county notify us? Of? When they cut, when they strike the rates. They, they, they will send a certification of all the rates uh, based on the A4F form submitted by the schools, which are the levies, because uh, schools raise half of their money from the prior year and half from the current year. Uh, they also will put in the county, they'll put the fire districts in, they'll put ours in, and then we get a certification that we use then to send to uh, have our tax bill printed. So I won't. I won't have that information because probably Kelly Hepp, the county tax administrator, has not figured that all out yet. Okay. With that process, I'm sorry, that process okay. perhaps July, because I know I'm thinking of printing, I'm going back from August 1st tax date to printing of tax I hope bills to... I'm hoping to have the certification in June. Okay. What, what generally happens that slows the process down is the state does not provide the state aid certifications uh, because of their budget cycle. And without that being able to be put on the bill, it statutorily has to be on the bill, we can't, we can't go ahead and print the tax bills. Okay. And, and what I'm alluding to is that the, the freeholders just passed this on Friday. After what we went through last year, getting hit from the left, hitting from the right, hit from behind, and hit from face forward, were any of you aware that the freeholders had passed their budget and that they were looking for six Point six million additional dollars to be raised by taxes. Were any of you aware of that? I was not aware that they raised that, or that was that you, that, that was communicated today. I was not aware. Of that. It was passed on Friday, which most negative things are. Um, is there a way that in the future we're going to see a tax increase, even though you're stating that we're not going to locally? The county's still looking for more money from us. Can we finally, and it was asked last year, communicate with the different entities that delve into our property tax pockets that this perfect storm doesn't happen again? How can we get on the same page as the freeholders, the BHP, and the Gloucester Township School District? And the fire is a different situation. I, I understand that. How do we prevent the perfect storm from striking a devastating Gloucester Township again. And I'm using this as an example. They did it Friday. When would you be notified? Look at that time frame and evaluate that for the next time you're ready to raise taxes and knowing that the county is raising taxes. And the school seems to like that 2% thing, but to prevent that perfect storm from happening again, it, it could be something we could learn from. Dating the what they've passed, knowing what they're looking for, and knowing what you can do to avoid that again. Is that something we can work on in communicating with those different entities, even though they are their own uh, entities themselves, to not let this happen again? Well, there was, first I want to go back. Uh, I don't think anyone here on council called it a perfect storm last year. Mr. Carter did. He's not on council, I think. Uh, so. That's the administration, least, no, correct? I just, and it was. I, you know, I, each each week when you come up here, you say it's twelve percent or twelve cent increase is eleven point two. Now, uh, there has been communication uh, informally uh, with the Black Horse Pike Regional and uh, with the local Gloucester Township Public Schools um, and with uh, the administration here uh, this past year. Uh, of course, there's a zero tax levy, zero increase on the tax levy from the township, a one point seven. Uh, sent increase from the local and Black Horse Pike came in at a two. They did not exceed the uh, two percent cap. So, but there was informal conversations with, not as a group, but uh, conversations took place. I know Mr. Carson spoke with administrators of both uh, the BAs of both of those entities. Uh, so there were discussions about where they were with their budget um, and what number they were going to come in with. Uh, Mr. Carson, were there any conversations with the county? 
No, it did not have any, any conversation with the county. But we did, we did speak with the schools, uh, the mayor and I both spoke with the schools. Tom, I'm putting you on the spot here, but a Mr. Powder, you said it was a $6 million increase? What the, and what they indicated, and the story was in the Courier Post, and it was uh, uh, Jim Walsh that had reported that. And it was reported that it was passed on f this past Friday, the 19th, and that six million dollars or so would be raised. Uh, it yeah, would I, be I don't out of a budget because I was going to. Th that is a six million dollars of a budget that is. I, I we we yeah. have a what a 56 million dollar budget. 59. 59. So with a county budget. Um, so. What a six million dollar increase, what it would be, you have no idea off the top of your head what that increase would be for our residents. I do not, there's no way. I'll get some answers. Well, I want to see what a six million what, dollar, you, I want to see what a six million dollar increase is for a budget that could be in the hundreds of, of million dollars. I'm assuming it's six million in appropriations, not six million. That's the budget. Three hundred seventy-one million. How much? Three hundred seventy-one point five. Yeah. Okay. I guess what I'm getting at is more so the communications. Uh, you know, the fact that we're seeing an increase, and, and of course, if you're watching social media, and I, I know you are, Mr. Mercado. Um, I know you are too, Mr. Polidoro. In any event, you're quite the watchdog. If you think so, what I would state is that what happened last year to taxpayers. The repercussions and the waves are still being felt by those that are getting messages that their escrow has fallen way short, mm -hmm. driving their mortgages up, driving their mortgages up substantially. And although Gloucester Township can't take full responsibility of that, that perfect storm that the administration had had stated, uh, I and and that you are, um, is creating another aftermath uh, of issues for people that are struggling and trying to pay their mortgage and finding out. It's very devastating to find out that you have your bills worked out to pay your mortgage and your mortgage goes up and it goes up and all of a sudden while it's going up you're still finding your escrow falling short and a lot of people are not watching for that because a lot of times it's hard to see when your escrow where it is and then when it's taken out because it's hard to keep track of that but you do know when they tell you your mortgage is going up two hundred dollars or whatever it may be my main point is the communication with the schools and the county so that you know when Gloucester Township is ready to raise its taxes that we're not doing it at the same time that other entities are and we could avoid a devastating blow like we had last time thank you thank you have a good evening anyone else see this where's the council just ask um, clarification on two aspects. Um, 20 licenses are going to be issued. Is that per year or is that in totality? We have now, it's listed as a max 20 in the ordinance. We may have to revisit that if uh, if it's I, if it's exact, I don't know, if it's rules are going to come in, uh, but that's something that we can revisit and amend if we have to. Okay. Now, uh, again, clarification. If a if a property is occupied by a tenant, and let's say it's a long-term tenant, does a tenant qualify for an application, or does it have to be an actual homeowner? I would think a tenant would be qualified as long as they have landlord consent. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thank you. Mr. Williams. Tim Williams, 3 Tiffany Place, here. Um, I wasn't going to ask any questions, but uh, during the evening, a few popped up. Um, three ladies that were here, uh, I don't think it was that they knew that, uh, and properties, they were saying it, but there are renters there that don't care, don't care the properties and that. But the landlords are responsible for that. Not it, eventually, you could go to the uh, landlord, not the Brenners, right? Correct. Uh, so um, the landlord should be responsible and notified that the property is not up to date or not being taken care of. 
Um, unfortunately, there are certain neighborhoods in our community where um, when someone is renting in the yeah. neighborhood, they don't put as much effort into the upkeep of the property. Right. Uh, um, and, and I want to thank uh, uh, Tom for, uh, I was here uh, about, uh, about, um, uh, about two months ago, about a home on uh, Bromley Drive in Sturbridge Jokes. They're cutting the grass now and everything, but they, it's starting to uh, deter a lot faster. Now the attic fans are falling out, and I don't know if you know that's you know they should be taking care of that. The uh, the owners are uh, are the bank, I mean, because it's uh, in bank hands now. So, but I mean, I, I just don't know if at to what point they start coming in and um, um, taking care of the problems that are in the property itself. Jim, can you uh, give us that address? Uh, nine when you're done, um, please come up here. Okay. Once you're done. Um, I had another question. Maybe you could refer to the chief. I'm not sure. But um, on in Sturbridge Jokes, we have a playground. And that was, uh, to be brief, that was 1986. Whenever uh, uh, the Sturbridge Stur 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 Jokes was going to be um, built in three, three, three different stages. Two stages were built. And John Meekins, the builder, ran out of money. The money that he put on deposit, um, the township kept. And what they, uh, we, we negotiated with for a park uh, that's in Sturbridge Oaks now. Is that park only for Sturbridge Oaks residents, or can that anyone become, come into that park and, and, and use the park as they are doing now? It, anyone. It's a township park that anyone can utilize. Well, I've noticed recently, and I'm not thrilled about it, uh, our younger kids go up there to play basketball because it's basketball and nets, and we put up nets ourselves. Uh, and um, these older, old people, and I'll say kids, but they're um, the driving age, are coming in and they're, th and my grandson said, uh, Pa, they threw us off the court. I'm not, I can't go up against these kids, I'm 73 years old. I don't know what to do. And I mean, they're coming in with cars. There was three, four cars there last weekend. Uh, and again, I noticed in the cans that were put in by the public works, um, in the cans, I noticed the same thing. I noticed beer cans, liquor bottles. Um, I, I didn't notice any drug paraphernalia, but I'm walking around the, the next day and looking in there. But I didn't know how, who we would speak to or what we could do about some of these. Um, they're not kids, these older, uh, they're adults coming in using the baskets and, uh, or the park and throwing the kids off the... Uh, out of there. It can then be maybe police or someone come in and just maybe ask for ID or look at them or I mean they're not they're not doing us any good in there. Jim, generally when do, when do they tend to uh, throw weekends, off the weekends, weekends. Um, Saturdays and Sundays sometimes on a Friday night they'll, they're, they're in there and you know what it, it can't be doing, any, uh, doing us any good either because some of them are sitting in cars some of them playing basketball, so they're not, you know, they're not there for any good when they're sitting in the cars. Yeah. I think that's something that um, we, we police uh, the department can monitor. The chief's taking notes there, Jim. Uh, All right. So thank you for that. That's it. Thank you very much. If you can bring to have that address. address. Anyone else? Seeing Tom, we'll close the second public portion. Polling of directors. Chief Farrell. Nothing to report, thank you. Mr. Parlamere. Nothing to report. I wanted to thank everybody for coming out this evening. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Clark, I, I did listen to you. I considered what you said. Uh, so thank you very much. Have a good night. Mr. Schmidt. I'd like to thank everyone for coming out this evening. Thank you for your comments. And I have some brochures that I'll put on the desk for the Gloucester Township Memorial Day services fastly approaching. Thank you.
Thank you all for coming out. I appreciate the information shared and have a safe and good holiday weekend. Uh, I want to thank everyone for coming out this evening. Uh, a couple of announcements. There is a movie night in the park at Veterans Park here on Friday night. Uh, it's Finding Dory. That's the name of the movie. Uh, the direct department is free, of course. Um, we have Memorial Day services here, as Mr. Schmidt had said. Uh, they will be at 11 o'clock here at Veterans Park. Uh, the St. Baldrick's event that uh, Mrs. Winters talked about, that raised $33,000 for pediatric cancer. And the woman that spearheads that, the individual, is Debbie Simone. She's a Gloucester Township School Board member. And it is just, you're overwhelmed at how much work is put into this and the people that participate in it. So I want to thank her and the committee of people that worked with it. And lastly, uh, I want to, uh, we had a resident of Gloucester Township that passed away uh, on May 2nd, um, she, uh, Laura Powers. Laura was a uh, visitor to our council meetings uh, in the, I guess, 10 plus years that I've known her and was a resident, one of the first residents at Senior Campus One, which is a project that the Gloucester Township Housing Authority had spearheaded down in Lakeland. Um, she loved serving her community. Uh, she was at many events taking pictures um, to the point where I used to tell her stop taking pictures of the back of my head because I'm rec receding. Uh, but Laura was a wonderful woman that um, I'm going to sorely miss and most of us that know her will miss. There will be a memorial service June 9th at Senior Campus 1 from 9 to 11. Uh, but she was a long time former employee of American Red Cross and participated uh, in advocating for military members and made several trips down to uh, the military home down in Violent. Uh, an avid photographer for a lot of her photos hang in a lot of Camden County locations uh, throughout the county. So uh, if you could please keep her and her family in your prayers. Um, and with that, I entertain a motion to adjourn. So, all those in favor? Aye. Aye thank you. Have a great evening.